Hello, my dears. Today we are going to talk about something that's, I would say, near and dear to my heart, but it is near and dear to my heart in the same way that like gender dysphoria is near and dear to my heart. And yeah, so I wanted to be there, but like, that's where it is and it's not moving and I cannot escape no matter how hard I try. Um, but yeah, so uh, what is internalized ableism? What does it look like and how can one learn to manage it so that it does not prevent you from living your life as a disabled human being? Because we deserve to do that. Now obviously I don't have all the answers because I still struggle with this every single day as much as everybody else does, but as I always say, having words for bad things makes them infinitely less bad. Still pretty bad, but like, less. So anyway, the best definition that I could find of internalized ableism was from at disability reframed on Instagram, who I will link their page below. And it says internalized ableism refers to the phenomenon of disabled people believing prejudices about themselves that become internalized by daily living in an ableist society. Kind of in the same way that a woman with internalized sexism might believe that she isn't actually as worthy as her male counterparts in a space or something else like that. But anybody, regardless of ability or disability, on some level does experience some internalized ableism because, well, we live in a society that runs on ableism, so of course some of that is going to make its way into our brains and absolutely refuse to budge. And in the same way that often the most homophobic people are the ones who are trying to deny their own queerness. I often find that the most ableist people are the ones who refuse to admit to themselves that they might be disabled and that internalized ableism runs deep, which makes getting accommodations from these people really fun and spicy. Um, but that's a story for another day. But basically the way that internalized ableism happens is through internalizing discriminatory or ignorant things that other people say and the portrayals that we see in the media add a lot to that. For example, a lot of autistic people have a hard time believing that they actually could be autistic because they have internalized that autism is equivalent to teenage white boy who likes trains, despite us knowing that there are many other kinds of autism. Now, based on all of the various sources and articles that I read for this video, in combination with my own experience, obviously, I kind of found the experiences of internalized ableism to fit into three categories of thoughts or beliefs or whatever. Now, the first is the idea that your productivity is your worth because, well, we live in a capitalist society and if a person isn't conventionally productive, aka can work all the time and make money from that work and whatnot, they're not seen as a valid human being who deserves to take up space. Obviously that is not at all the case, but because we have all had this idea ingrained in us from day one of life essentially, it's pretty hard to shake. And it leaves a lot of disabled people feeling worthless for taking breaks or taking time off or, you know, simply not doing things even if we need to make those decisions for our health, which leads us to push ourselves too far because we want to feel worthy and therefore more productive. The second category is imposter syndrome. The whole am I making this up or I'm just attention seeking or I'm using my disability as some excuse to get out of things or I'm lying or I'm not disabled enough and I don't fit into the community or I'm taking accommodations or space away from other people who really need it and I shouldn't be here and you know, I need to prove my disability. And this can again, lead us to pushing ourselves too far, not advocating for ourselves and our needs and oversharing medical information try to prove that our disabled experience is worthy and then feeling really, really gross after we say all of those things. And this is not because we're trying to overshare, it's just that we kind of know that we're probably not going to be taken seriously if we don't overshare. And so we make ourselves really vulnerable in an attempt to change that. And instead, we just feel gross and also it doesn't always work. So at the end of the day, we just feel insecure and angry and resentful and lonely and it's awful. Also, I don't know if you can hear that, but that is my dog in REM. Also, when it comes to the whole not advocating for ourselves thing, sometimes we don't want to overshare these things, so instead we just stay silent, which then forces us to accept all of these things without the accommodations that we need, which will then subsequently amplify symptoms and force us to minimize our own pain and struggles. And obviously that is the actual worst. The last category of internalized ableist thought that I was able to pin down is the whole I'm defective and broken aspect where not being the norm as a disabled person makes us feel like we are too much or we're too little or we're lazy or a burden or a broken person who's undeserving of taking up space. We're bad at communication. We're defective. We're constantly wrong. We should just be able to control ourselves. Why can't we do that? And this makes us feel very ashamed of the things that make us different. And it often leads to body issues, to hiding pieces of yourself and to staying quiet 
quiet and not asking for help, not setting attainable expectations, not taking care of yourself, etc. This category also includes the internalization of things that other people may frequently ask us that are offensive. For example, I'm often asked, can autistic people have sex? And that makes me internalize that I have to do something like that in order to prove a stereotype wrong, even if that's not necessarily what I may want. Also, the comment of, you'll be lucky to find somebody special enough who wants to marry you, really internalizes the idea of you're defective and nobody's gonna love you because you're disabled, which can get us into some really, really scary situations because we're gonna take whatever love we can get. Now that I know from experience. So anyway, now that we know what all of these thoughts look like, let us acknowledge that these thoughts are not really based in truth, or if they are, they're incredibly inflated versions of the truth. So let's talk about how we can manage all of these negative thoughts. The first one is simply to counteract them. For example, with imposter syndrome, remind yourself that there is no such thing as disabled enough. If you need a support to reduce physical pain and or psychological distress, you deserve that accommodation no matter what, and you deserve to call yourself disabled if you feel that way. Whether the disaster of the medical system may agree with you or not, because diagnoses are annoying and I want the whole diagnostic system to be probably yeeted out of the nearest window. Also, remember that you can be disabled and also physically able-bodied. That is possible, that is a thing, and it's common. That's totally fine and you are just as welcome in our community. If people make you feel like you're asking for too much or you're whining or whatever when you're asking for accommodations, just remind yourself that that's not a you thing. It's because other people don't see disabled people as worthy human beings and therefore refuse equitable treatment. That does not mean that we are any less deserving of being treated equitably. Also remember that a lot of people will deny that people's disabilities exist simply because we are the one equitable minority that you can become a part of at literally any point in time. And that really, really terrifies people. So for them, if they pretend that we don't exist, they don't have to face that reality, which is kind of why we've all been raised to be pretty uncomfortable about visible aspects of disability and mental illness. It's very much a them issue, not a you thing. And I know that it's easy to logic your way out of these things on paper, but then when you're actually feeling the negative emotion, you're like, well, I cognitively know that it's inflated, but I still feel wrong and gross and just disgusting. And that is also totally normal, and I want to point that out. Now, when it comes to productivity, try to remind yourself that your worth is not defined by your productivity, which is way easier said than done, but your worth is instead on how you treat others, how you take up space, and work on loving you for who you are, not for what you do, and I know that that's much easier said than done, but I highly, highly recommend making a box of love letters to yourself. I did this for a music video like a year and a half ago, I wrote like 200 or something, it was truly life-changing in a weird way. Um, I have a template of those somewhere in the description. I will link them for you when I find it. Um, other things to help this kind of stuff include practicing positive self-talk, celebrating small wins, trying to not compare yourself to others, and going to therapy. Though for some people, therapy doesn't totally work for them, and that's also totally okay. Um, I have a video about that up here. Now, some other things that helped me a lot was gradually trying to advocate for my needs by asking for like one accommodation at a time um, and adding these little adjustments and getting more and more over time, which is really hard until I realized how much better I physically felt after and how worth that anxious risk was. Also, surround yourself with other disabled people, whether in person or digitally, because representation does a whole lot more for internalized ableism than you may think. And the community will help you to slowly feel more comfortable talking openly about disability, so it will feel less shameful or taboo to you as well. It's also important that you be realistic with the things you take on. Don't set unrealistic goals and expectations. Know your limits and learn to say no to things. Instead, try to commit to things that truly bring you joy and spend your energy on those to the best of your ability. And don't feel bad for feeling this way and don't feel like you need to keep these things hidden. I know that I personally am like, oh, I can't talk about the negative pieces of disability because I feel like I have to talk about it as a positive thing so that people will take me seriously. But these feelings are normal and they're a normal part of disability and it's not healthy to keep them hidden away. Even if that means journaling about it or making art or writing music or anything else that may feel right to you, you should definitely express whatever you're feeling so that it doesn't just eat you up inside because that's not fun for anybody. All in all, remember that internalized ableism is normal. We all have it. All disabled people struggle with it and not disabled people. That does not mean that those inflated thoughts are true um, because you are worthy and you are lovely. And I, for one, am so very glad that you exist. So hang in there. Remember that progress is not linear at all. It takes time to learn to love yourself when the world has been trying for your entire life to make you feel the opposite. 
Especially if on top of this you also happen to be queer or trans or any marginalized gender or a person of color or etc etc. Uh, it's hard and I see you and I get it and you're gonna be okay. I promise. With that, thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. Remember your story isn't over. It has only just begun. I changed that. I, re I changed it to remember it's never too late to start over. Whatever. Have it. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you, my dear, in the next one.